First, I'd like to uh, recognize our Distinguished Scientist Award winner uh, for the, the last year, for 2020. Uh, the CNTA Distinguished Scientist Award is presented annually to recognize regional scientists and engineers who have made exceptional lifetime scientific achievements. The award is in honor of Dr. Fred Davison, who was chairman of CNTA's board of directors from 1994 until his death in 2004. The 2020 winner of the Distinguished Scientist Award is Dr. Paul Klossner. Dr. Klossner is a laboratory fellow at the Savannah River National Laboratory. He advises SRNL corporate and government leaders on critical uh, national security issues and on the national security and, uh, and, and the NNSA uh, Defense Nuclear Nonproliferation Advisory Council. He is a nationally recognized authority on heavy water reactor fuel production, plutonium production, and uranium recycling, tritium production and processing, warhead gas transfer systems, and high level waste management. So, Paul, if you could step forward. We'd like to recognize you for this award. Let me turn it over now to the program, the technical program, and, and introduce our speaker for today, uh, Dave Olson. Dave Olson is the Executive Vice President of the National Security Administration, Administration Capital Projects for Savannah River Nuclear Solutions. His responsibilities include executing the conceptual design and other pre-critical decision activities for the proposed uh, Savannah River Plutonium Processing Facility, as well as responsibility for trit uh, tritium finishing facility and the CERV Plus Plutonium Disposition Projects and the MOX termination activities. He has more than 38 years of exper experience in project management, operations, and engineering in nuclear materials processing and nuclear waste treatment and he's worked in many uh, uh, government nuclear facilities, operations, and, and projects. He had previously led prime contracts at both SRS and the Hanford site. So Dave, I'd like you to come forward and, and please uh, present your presentation today. Thank you. Am I live? Okay. So Sharon, how's the rehab going? Better. Better. All right. Yeah, okay, so. last time I was in front of you was probably eight years ago when I got a chance to be part of the uh, high level waste contract team at Savannah River site. I got asked in 2018 by my parent company, Floor, to uh, come back to the site for a couple of months uh, to help uh, initiate some of the capital projects at Savannah River for NSA work. So those couple of months uh, are continuing. A little background on uh, what I'm going to tell you about today. So the, the work that's still going on at Savannah River site uh, is driven from left to right here by environmental stewardship work, kind of cleanup uh, work that's happening. Uh, nuclear materials and for national security uh, that are going on, plutonium and tritium handling in particular. Uh, the nuclear materials processing, uh, Wyatt Clark's here today, he leads that effort at the site, as well as transforming materials into additional assets or waste forms. And then uh, Bahid and his team here from Savannah River National Lab that's going through their contract transition at the moment and supporting all of those missions. SRNS, we're about just short of 7,000 people uh, large at the moment doing all of those missions. Uh, the entities involved at the site, uh, uh, shown here in blue, are all the uh, operating contractors and entities. And the, the large box and large circle in the middle there, Savannah River Nuclear Solutions, is what we're a part of. Uh, across the top are the Department of Energy and NSA offices that we support. Uh, in my case, particular is defense programs as well as acquisition and project management, since we're a combination of a program activity uh, as well as projects. Again, about 7,000 of the sites, 12,000 are part of what we're doing. I do have with me today uh, one of my two direct clients, uh, Jason Armstrong. If you'd stand up in the kind of way they can see. Uh, Jason's uh, new to us, but not new to the NNSA business. Uh, he started a month or two ago, uh, took uh, Nicole uh, Wil John Wilson's spot, and uh, he's been leading the Savannah River Field Office. He's my program counterpart as we stand up the plutonium pit production mission. Scott Cannon is not here today as my counterpart on the project side uh, relative to the capital projects we're working. 
So NNSA, uh, you're, if you don't have any background there, so it's all about non-nuclear proliferation and defense programs. It's keeping our country safe from those that would have us not be safe and do that from a nuclear weapons standpoint. So Santa River has been involved with that for decades, so some 70 years on the tritium side. I involved on the plutonium side, the uranium side, making the materials that went into the next stage of weapons production. About that's what we're all about and trying to service the, the government and service our country in that way. Now the timeline uh, dates back to the 1950, and last year we celebrated the best we could uh, in a cool fit year, our 70th anniversary of Savannah River site. But you can see the migration from left to right uh, with the facilities that were built, facilities that were modified, facilities that were brought new online, uh, and the mission changes that have happened. Constant through that's been tritium, constant through that's been plutonium and uranium, and now a different version of how we'll do plutonium at the site uh, going forward. Not to say that SRS uh, continues to be an enduring site when it comes to those critical and the same missions. The budget's shifting a little bit, not unexpected, at a time when you're in cleanup mode as well as ramping up missions. Uh, cleanup mode going down some, mission work uh, going up. So there's still a pretty health, healthy EM budget. There, the NSA budget is going up and will continue to do that over the next decade. And then there's a small component work for others, primarily housed in the Saranda River National Lab. Again, to tell you that the high site is very healthy when it comes to budget and funding priority. <laughs> Program-wise, on the NSA side, uh, tritium operations, as you're very familiar with. Uh, the middle box, surplus plutonium, uh, that's the non-nuclear proliferation. We're taking what is an operation of the plutonium in a certain form, get it where it's unattractive to those that would do something bad with it, and getting it in kind of a waste form, and then shipping it to a repository for long term. And then the far right-hand side is the plutonium pit activity, which stands up for the first time with plutonium modernization pit production program uh, at Savannah River site. So two defense programs on the left and right, non-nuclear non proliferation in the middle. Uh, the scopes are expanding for all three of those programs. For tritium, it's additional extractions per year, additional production capability, additional capacity. Uh, for surplus plutonium, it's get the plutonium out of South Carolina faster than the rate that we've been doing it. That's supported and service the, the state of South Carolina. And then plutonium modernization and start producing pits again at a more aggressive level as a nation, both at Los Alamos and Savannah River. We've been dormant in that as a country dating back to the 90s. To carry out these missions, uh, there are three major capital projects that we've been asked to accommodate and accomplish. Uh, working down on your left-hand side of the slide, the uh, first is tritium finishing facility. That's the last facility dating back to the 50s to be replaced and infrastructure upgraded to make the tritium complex at Savannah River reflect today's technology and capability. The, the uh, bug will bottom and work back up. Service plutonium project, uh, we've been doing repackaging of plutonium into a waste form now for a number of years. This adds three additional glove boxes to do it faster, get plutonium out of the state in, uh, faster than, than has been happening. And then the middle box, the plutonium processing facility, brand new mission to the site. Not the first time we've done plutonium, but done plutonium in this manner and taking advantage of the MOX footprint and the, the structure that's already been built. Uh, funding uh, and spend to date, shown on the right-hand side there, we were about $230 million across all three projects last year. This year we're coming in around $340. Uh, and and uh, although they're semi still embargo, the FY22 numbers look pretty healthy relative to keeping all three of those projects going on their current pace. A little more about each project. Uh, before I cover these, let me uh, remind you about critical decisions decision gates that the government has to go through for projects. Uh, the first one, critical decision zero, there are five of them, critical decision zero. That's, is there a mission need for a project here to support a particular activity? Uh, the second is critical decision one, and that is they look at alternatives to how to meet that mission need and do a conceptual design for one of those that's preferred. Critical decision two is preliminary design is done far enough to cast a baseline, scope, cost, and schedule, so you can then lock into and execute Critical decision three says design is finished, I can start constructing. Critical decision four says we're done handing it off to operations. So uh, the first of these three projects, uh, the surplus plutonium project, it got its critical decision one, meaning conceptual design was approved, get on with uh, my mic floating in and out. Why'd you shut it off and took me this one? How's that? All right, thanks. So critical decision one for the surface plutonium was done in December of 2019, and it's been off and running since then. Uh, we're not too far away from getting to final design. 
Uh, we've done some site preparation work in K area. It's a bolt-on and modification of the K area reactor. Uh, we'll finish final design here in the next number of months. We'll start a long lead procurement for the things that uh, take a while to build and get here, uh, primarily the three new glove boxes that are coming, uh, and starting construction here uh, sometime late in FY22. And that project has a, a current targeted critical decision for physical complete handoff to operations in, in fiscal year 26. So at that point, we'll be able to turn up the pace and the rate at which uh, plutonium disposition can happen from the state of South Carolina. That's the next one. The tritium finishing facility, as I mentioned earlier, that's the last facility to be modified, replaced, infrastructure redone, and the entire of the operation within the tritium complex. Uh, we finished the site preparation design, we finished some of the site preparation work, and now we're starting into uh, preliminary design for the two process buildings. That one as well, we'll get critical decision one came the same time the other project did, late uh, December of 2019. And it, it's moving towards uh, sometime around FY 29 to 30-ish uh, when it goes into hot operation CD4. Meantime, the Tritium team will keep using that HRA old manufacturing facility uh, to meet the mission need. For the pit production, uh, this has a two-fold approach. So one is a brand new program uh, and, and that will end up with about 1,800 full-time workers that are not there today. So it's lab technicians, operators, mechanics, engineers, scientists, uh, and the like to do a plutonium mission. The last time Savannah River site made an attempt at this, in fact, Jimmy Angelos was on the yeah. team back then as well. Some of the other ones might have participated in that. 2004 or so time frame. Uh, the modern pit facility uh, was an attempt to maybe bring that mission to Savannah River site. Uh, we, we took advantage of a lot of that data and detail as we started our program. Uh, so a lot of work's gone into figuring out what it takes, not only to do the project, but also to stand up the program and using a lot of what Tritium has done and mirroring a lot of those defense program activities. Working on the left-hand side, down that timeline from top to bottom, uh, Jim mentioned the MOX termination project. We were handed off in April of 19 uh, from MOX services to get the MOX project terminated and, and cleaned up and closed up. And it involved uh, dispositioning 9 million pieces of equipment that were uninstalled that MOX bought. Uh, two other projects, two other sites. Uh, we had auctions, you know, some went to scrap, some went to donations of the local community, community reuse organization, that's now done. Uh, the next step was to take those facilities and make sure they met SRNS codes because the mock services contract was a bit different. All those code changes have been done and implemented. And then the last activity we have is there are, I can't count how many records that were generated during the mock construction, a lot of which we need to, to bolt onto as we do the pit design, a lot of which we don't. And uh, we're about to get a handoff to say, do the right thing relative to records disposition. So that project is about to wrap up and be closed out. And then we've done a critical decision one uh, for the PIT project that got delivered uh, late January this year. Uh, the NSA is working through their normal review and approval processes. They have an independent cost estimate they do to verify their estimate against ours. They have an independent project review to make sure the technical approach is sound. They have a project risk management committee review to make sure their, their risk is well understood. And then they have an acquisition advisory board kind of a final confirmation before, in this case, the Deputy Secretary of Energy will sign. So that is all in progress. Uh, and during the course of this summer, we should see that come to fruition. The project then will move from conceptual design into preliminary design uh, as we go forward. Why Savannah River site? It's part of a uh, two-site national strategy uh, to make plutonium pits between Los Alamos, doing a portion of it, Savannah River, the other. Take advantage of Savannah River's years and years of, of operating experience, including plutonium, uh, and, and the workforce that's capable to do that. Here's what the footprint looks like today, what Mox left us with. Uh, when they finished up their activities here in 2018. Uh, this is a, a conceptual of, uh, of what it will look like uh, when we finish construction. It's the blue are a number of new buildings, some utilities, some warehousing, some admin buildings, um, entry control facilities. The yellow gold around the perimeter is the intrusion detection zone. It will be a secure uh, classified area. Then the upper corner at about the 12 o'clock, 12.05 position, uh, kind of in a tan color. That's, that was going to be the glove box assembly facility for MOX. Um, we as well have about 300 glove boxes, so we're going to have to have an assembly facility, but we're going to use this for a training and operations center where we'll have a simulated line. We'll get as much as we can done for training, procedure, startup testing, check out with surrogate to advance the program as quickly as possible. So that'll probably be the first thing you'll see modified and, uh, and the like. And right now, SRNL is supporting us with a material transport system where you move items between glove boxes. We're testing that out coming up here shortly in that same location. 
Uh, the strategic plan shown here, uh, working in top to bottom, critical decision one is a stage for approval. Critical decision two and three will follow after that. Concurrent with design and construction, we'll be starting to do some training on classified, classified after that. And then with weapons, there's a very systematic, very thoughtful, very disciplined process where you prove your ability to make a weapon that can be qualified. So you go through a development period. After the project's done, so he's in his commission, you go through a development period, a process proven, a qualification, and then make your first real production unit. So there's a bit of work to be done even when the project is done to make sure you can prove that, that weapons will happen. So all that's being worked on and being developed. And I'll read to you, uh, Dr. Charles Verdon, uh, he's our NA-10 acting lead uh, in D.C. He was before the Senate Armed Services Committee two weeks ago, a testimony about the uh, nuclear weapons program for the country for NSA. He says about the pit project at Savannah River, uh, this summer efforts will focus on advancing the Savannah River Plutonium Facility critical decision process from CD0 to CD1 and beginning the process towards CD2, uh, which is 90% design complete. So. And he says the two-site approach is necessary to reestablish the nation's ability to produce plutonium in support of defense requirements and to provide needed resiliency against unplanned outages at either location. So that's the path we're on, and it's one that's supported and being led by NSA. So staffing-wise, I mentioned 1,800 full-time jobs coming. Uh, we do have a staffing process, a staffing plan, a mechanism where we're pursuing those. Not shown on this is the 2,500 construction at peak that we'll have in the, the three years, the middle of this decade, uh, building out the MOX facilities, and then an additional 300 or so staff, you know, we bring in extra people during startup testing and commissioning uh, that are also gonna be a part of this. We do have a company we're working with uh, called uh, ProtoServe and KeySource, uh, an LLC uh, joint venture. Uh, they put together software models and, and meet with the client, in this case us, to look at what's your supply, what's the supply for the people you need, and what's the demand curve. So by numbers, skill sets, clearances, training, and to try to get 800 people up and qualified on station uh, as you get into the startup phase of your project is very important. So if you haven't been called yet, you're likely to be, but they're gathering data from around the area, some 250 <coughs> institutions, academia, industry, chambers of commerce, and so on. It's about figuring out uh, what your inputs are around the supply side of that equation and then feeding into our model. So the model will kick out and tell our engineering manager you need to hire this many of this type on this date, and it automatically generates a posting that says start it now, because it gives you lead time for getting them, training them, clearing them, that kind of thing. So phenomenal tools, the best I've seen in industry. But that's our only way we're gonna make sure we have those right people at the right place at the right time uh, to do that. About half the workforce at 1800 will be hourly, so it's, it's a good opportunity for jobs programs for the tech college folks in this area, whether it's the Denmark, Allendale side, or the, or the Aiken Edgefield side. <coughs> Also some unique skill sets that the site doesn't have a lot of, in some cases don't have. So metrology, high, pre high precision machining, a lot more cybersecurity, machinists with nuclear. Uh, so we're working with a number of schools to take their machinist programs and make them a higher level of precision capability. UNC Charlotte has that, Spartanburg Tech has that upstate. And we'll see what we can bring to the local area here. But another great opportunity for uh, jobs and, and enduring missions here at the site. I mentioned earlier about the Training and Operations Center. Uh, we're also partnering up with the lab with, uh, with Los Alamos, Spanish River Lab here in Los Alamos for how to utilize their folks uh, with these classified, unclassified test beds and platforms to get the most of our training procedures, testing and things done ahead of time. Staffing-wise, uh, we started, you know, when I started my two-month assignment in December of 18, <laughs> uh, we started with about 10 people. I think most of those were in the heat shop. Uh, that would be a great job getting interest in the program at the site. Uh, we're now approaching 1,000 across all three projects in just a couple of years. And they're spread out between Savannah River site, as well as Denver and Los Alamos for design teams, Greenville, South Carolina for design teams, and Sandia uh, for the physical security design teams. So just a lot of people, a lot of places. So it makes for a very interesting integration effort keep all of those, uh, those folks together, march to the same drum. Uh, Spending-wise, it, it is and it will continue to have an economic impact to this region. Uh, forecast spending uh, for this year, about 328, about half of that went to small business subcontractors. And, and I expect lots of opportunities over the course of the next uh, five years to involve the business community in this area. So whether it's fabrication, whether it's engineering services, whether it's civic technologies, whatever it might be. So watch, you know, FedBiz for opportunities as they come out. So 
a lot, lot of opportunities there for the area. So again, excited to be uh, doing this. So tritium finishing, it's all about finishing the last of that infrastructure for that mission. So it's, it's staged well for the decades to come. Surplus plutonium, we owe it to the citizens of South Carolina, which most of us in here are, or in Georgia, to get plutonium out where it's not an environmental risk or a, or a nuclear impact risk to the state or to the nation. And then plutonium pits, the next new exciting mission for the site. Take all that time that was done with plutonium metal and oxide production over the years and now turned into a pit manufacturing capability. So glad to be back, glad to support it, and uh, I'll let you know when there's two-month assignment. Yes. <laughs>